Hey guys, so this is example number five from section 4.2. We'll start with the definition. Functions with f prime equal to zero are constant. If f prime of x equals to zero, if f prime of x equals to zero at each point on an interval i, at each point on an interval, let's call it i, then there is a constant, then there is let's call it c, constant c for which f of x equals to c for all x in the domain of i. Okay. So in plain English, this is really saying this. Okay. Remember back in the days, remember the derivative of a constant, a constant function is zero. So this theorem or this definition is the converse of that. So the converse is also true. Now our second definition is functions with the same derivative differ only by a constant. So if f prime of x equals g prime of x, if f prime of x equals g prime of x at each point of an interval, let's call it i again, at each point of an interval i. Then there is a constant c. Then there is a constant c such that f of x equals to g of x plus c for all x in the interval i. So this is, so an example of that would be f of x equals 2x to the 6 plus 800 and then g of x equals 2x to the 6 plus 1. So the derivative f prime of x and g prime of x are exactly the same, and the only difference is their constant c. Let's move on to our example 5 on the next page, for me anyway. Example 5 says, For each of the following, find the function with the given derivative whose graph passes through the point p. They gave us the derivative f prime of x equals 1 divided by 4x to the 3 fourths, and the point is 1 comma negative 2. Usually when I'm doing the derivative, I like to use power rule because it's slightly easier than, than um, quotient rule. So I'm going to rewrite this using a negative exponent, which is, oops, this is going to give us 1 4 times x to the negative 3 4 just like that it's it wants us to find the function so that means it's f of x so f of x equals remember we're going backwards now so when you go backwards what you want to do with the power is you want to add 1 so 3 fourths negative 3 fourths plus 1 and remember in the front, you have to think about something here. You have to, I want to keep that open. And then we always have to add C. This is the new key right here. We have to add C, okay? So with that said, you are given a point. X is going to be one. Y is going to be negative two. Let's try to see what's happening when you add negative three fourths and one. So F of X equals, there is a, number in the front, the leading coefficient. 
So currently, if I add negative one, uh, I'm sorry, negative three fourth plus one, I will have a positive one fourth. Now, when you do the derivative, I, you have to glance at your derivative and you have to see, okay, what is the number in the front? Well, the number in the front is one quarter. So whatever function you have right here, would that give you one fourth? And right now the answer is yes, so we don't have to worry about the leading coefficient. It doesn't have to change. Now, but still you have to add at C, drop that down. Well, you know what X is, you know what Y is, we can just plug those in and then solve. So Y is going to be negative two equals X is one, one to the one four plus C. We have to solve for what C is, when negative two equals one, plus c minus one to both sides, c comes out to be negative three. Now our final answer is f of x equals x to the one quarter minus three. And that is the regular function. So now you have to go and manually solve for your constant. Let's move on to the next example. Similarly, we want to go backwards. So let's find f of x is. Well, 2x to go backwards, we're going to add an exponent. So x, currently the exponent is 1. So I want x to the 1 power plus 1. So that will give me 2. Now I have to think about the leading coefficient in the front of that. If I take the derivative, would that give me a 2? And the answer is yes. So I don't have to change anything with the leading coefficient. With the 1, the derivative of a constant, it's an x. Now the derivative, not the derivative, the antiderivative, the backwards way. So the antiderivative of cosine is to be sine. Okay. So if you go backwards, that's what you're getting. Now remember, we have to go and add c, whatever the constant is. So now that you have that, you want to plug in x equals to 0 and y equals to 3 and solve what c is. So 3 equals 0 squared plus 0 minus sine of 0 plus c. Well, luckily, all of this turns into 0. So c comes out to be 3 right away. Then you're going to have your original function f of x equals x squared plus x minus sine of x plus 3 and box that up. We have one last definition here. So what we were doing, for example, 5 is called antiderivative, going backwards. So the definition for that is a function f of x. And I'm going to use big capital F of x. Is an antiderivative of f of x if big capital F prime of x equals f of x for all x in the domain of regular small x, for all x in the domain of f of x. The process of finding an antiderivative is called an anti differentiation. So if you hear the word anti-differentiation, that's the same thing as anti-derivative. The process of finding an anti-derivative is anti-differentiation. If f of x has one antiderivative, if f of x, small f, has one antiderivative, let's call it big f of x. Okay. Then, it has infinitely many and each one differs 
by a constant. Okay, so what I mean by this is if I give you an antiderivative big F of x is one third x to the third and I would like for you to find the regular function of that. So the regular function of that would be x squared. Well, remember, but this, to be fair, f of x antiderivative can have different form. They can all differ by a constant, and the constant can be anything you want to be. So technically, I can have f of x, big F of x equals one third x to the third plus negative 1,000. Big F of x equals one third x to the third plus negative five. So whatever the constant is, you can have many big F of x, which is you can have as many antiderivative as you want.